Hi everyone. How are you today? I'm going to let you guys start rolling on. So today is a live Q&A on all things fertility supplements. Yes, so here's how it's going to go down. Ideally, there are just supplement questions. If you throw in some fertility questions, maybe I'll answer them. I mean, of course, this is all related to fertility supplements, but it can be related to any, any supplement question. And so what you have to do is use the question box. You have to insert your question in the question box. Any questions in the comments, I will not answer because I can't keep up with them. So all questions need to go to the question box. And today we're going to talk about supplements and fertility and health and vitality. So I'll let questions start coming in and I'm just going to have a sip of my water. And this is a live Q&A and I'm going to stay on for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. And when questions start coming in, I will start answering them. So you can ask me questions of like, how do supplements for X, Y, and Z help with X, Y, and Z? Or what should I do if I have this? Or my doctor said this dose, what about this? Things like that. Um, so spe specific supplement questions for fertility. If you guys also wanna know um, my top favorite fertility supplements, because I do update that list all the time, if you go to amyraup.com slash fertility supplements, it is an opt-in, I ask for your email which I think is a fair exchange for all of my information. And um, you will see all of my updated supplement, uh, fertility recommended supplements, health, oh my God, health related, fertility related supplement recommendations. Okay, questions are rolling in. So I'm gonna start answering them. And now remember, anybody who's just joined live, I know lots of people are coming on. So this is a live Q&A about supplements for fertility or for health. And if you ask questions in the comments, I will not answer them. All questions have to be put in the question box. So uh, Rian and California Baby, you guys just both ask questions in the comments. I will not answer them. You have to move them to the question box, okay? And, and it's not to be rude, it's just that it's a lot for me to keep up with because people constantly come on and then I gotta scroll through and I gotta remember, so it's a lot more efficient for me to have questions in the question box and then I will go through and I will answer them. And now there are a dozen or so questions, so I'm gonna start answering them. Um, what supplements are specifically beneficial when pre prepping for an egg retrieval making embryos? Um, everything, no, I'm kidding. I, you know, a lot of it depends on your case and so, but the big things that we wanna think about are, um, things that reduce inflammation and things that help reduce oxidative stress. So because oxidative stress and inflammation are what age our eggs or what impact our egg quality. We also never want to underestimate the power of sperm. So your partner, if you are in a partnership, should also be on good supplements. Um, follow the healthy daddy diet recommendations that I have. Um, you can just Google Amy Ralph and healthy daddy diet and it'll come up. But so baseline supplements that I think all women should be on when doing egg retrieval is a good antioxidant supplement. So right now, one of my favorites is Reserva Cell by Thorne. Again, all my supplements are on amyrop.com slash fertility supplements. So just go there. Um, and a good quality fish oil, up to two to three grams of fish oil, depending. Um, something like NAC, which is a really good antioxidant as well. 600, 900, 1200 milligrams, again, depending on the case, so I don't know your case. Um, vitamin D, vitamin D levels need to be between a 50 and a 70, so you need to dose accordingly. Um, vitamin D impacts egg quality, impacts implantation. Probiotics, we want healthy microbiome, uterine and um, GI tract, that will definitely impact egg quality, oxidative stress, all of that. Um, a good quality prenatal, with methylfolate, at least 800, but ideally upwards of 1600 micrograms of methylfolate, not folic acid. Very clear, not folic acid. Um, what else? I do love liver as a form. It's a nutrient dense uh, powerhouse, which is filled with antioxidants and B vitamins. So that's typically what I have all of my patients on is, is a good antioxidant or two. So Ovacetol, NAC, Reservacel, stuff like that. And they're all listed in my, on my page under antioxidants, so you'll see that. A good fish oil, vitamin D, a good prenatal with methylfolate, liver pills, probiotic, 
Um, those are usually really good starting points. And then I would also have some like doing liver support soup every day, which is from my book at Quality Diet or some kind of super greens, super food. Um, and uh, so now I'm going to start from the bottom. Any supplement for fallopian tube blockage? So some kind of like serapeptase or Wobenzyme, some kind of proteolytic enzyme to break down the blockage. And then Chinese herbs could also be helpful there. Um, dosages, please. Can you add that to you? I don't have dosages specifically for a reason on my recommended page because every case is different. And if you want that level of specificity, you got to coach with someone on my team. Um, just you could basically follow the labels though too. Uh, supplements that help prepare the body for IVF. So I basically just went through that. The, the first question was very similar for egg quality and retrieval. So just refer back to what I just said there. Um, uh, best supplements for PCOS and anovulation. So ovocetol, you need to be on, I like the Theralogics ovocetol. And if you use the link through my site, it's you get a pretty significant discount. And if you definitely have PCOS, I would go as, I would do four grams a day um, of ovocetol. It's myo and d inositol, which is in that one. The wholesome story is a good one too. So um, four grams a day, I would also do CoQ10 um, and make sure your protein levels are adequate. You need upwards of 80 grams of protein a day. I know that's not necessarily a supplement. Then I would also think about with um, PCOS, we know it's an inflammatory slash autoimmune like condition that you're on about three grams of fish oil a day too. So those are some, you know, and then check your vitamin D status, uh, all of those things. But ovocetol is the big, big biggie. Um, is it bad to be on low dose of DHA long-term over a year? No, not if it's low dose. Like we're talking less than 25 milligrams a day. That's okay. Again, any questions that come up in the comments, I'm not going to answer them. I have to, you have to submit it in the question box. Thank you guys. Uh, pretty sure I have endo. Should I do mitocore instead of a prenatal? You could. Mitocore is a great uh, antioxidant. I would definitely be on, if you know you have endo, I would also be on NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Um, and there's, you know, usually higher doses of NAC for uh, endo is important. So I think it's something like 1,200 four days a week, and then you take a break on the other three days. But you can you can quick Google that too, NAC for endometriosis, and there's a dose that comes up. Um, fish oil, NAC, the mitochore would be good. Make sure you're on enough methylfolate, though. Mitochore does not have enough methylfolate, so you have to add that in. Um... And then with endometriosis, adenomyosis, I also always recommend some kind of uh, proteolytic enzyme. I like Wobenzyme, but there's natokinase that's out there, serapeptase, those are all good as well. Um, okay. Is it possible to get too much methylfolate to the extent it's harmful? Um, it is a B vitamin, so it's not fat soluble it's water soluble so you'll pee it out but i do see people above and some some docs recommend like two three four micrograms a day it seems to be very um what's the word i want to it causes hypermethylation symptoms so you could google that hyper h p h y p e r hypermethylation symptoms and you'll see there's some negatives there so i'm pretty firm i don't really go above 1700 micrograms a day with my patients But for that reason alone, um, been on the quality diet, day 76, congrats. Recently checked my FSH, it's a 10.5, um, bit higher than it was in 2022 at 9.5, any suggestions? So I'm not that concerned. Um, and we do know now in the research that FSH around that level does not have any impact on pregnancy outcomes. So. I don't think you should be too concerned. Typically, it has something to do with estrogen. So if you lost weight on the egg quality diet and fat cells store estrogen, that could impact FSH. 
Um, but so then I would focus more on make sure you're not skipping meals, make sure you're eating enough of the protein, make sure you're getting enough rest to, to do things to build the estrogen and that will regulate the FSH. But an FSH of a 10 is, is fine. Um, not to undermine how you feel, I don't mean that, but just the research is showing us FSH even up to 20 doesn't seem to impact pregnancy outcomes. Um, CoQ10 versus ReservaCell. Uh, they're just two different things. ReservaCell has the NMR, which is the same thing as NAD, um, which is a powerful anti-aging uh, substance. And then it comes with trimethylglycine and resveratrol to help with absorption and utilization. So ReservaCell is basically like a, a multi for anti-aging cellular quality. CoQ10 is CoQ10, ubiquinol which is another antioxidant that can also help with egg quality and aging. So a lot of patients are on both, um, but they're, they're different and not the same. But they both do have the same kind of approach, if you will. Um, what supplements do you recommend for progesterone? My progesterone dropped from 20 to 14, my last IVF cycle. Um, I mean, so in this case, I would do progesterone suppositories, get them prescribed from your doctor. Um, suppositories or injections, especially with IVF. Um, you also want to think about absorption. So the gut microbiome, making sure that your gut health is really in check and that you're absorbing properly because that could impact all your hormones. So that you're on a good probiotic, you might even want to be on some digestive enzymes. Wolbenzyme is one of my favorite to help you absorb and utilize. You could also do, sometimes you have to do like the oral route and the suppository route with progesterone to get the numbers up. Um, an over-the-counter cream could help too. And then in Chinese medicine, we're very big fans of everything being cooked versus raw. And that really helps with the yang energy, which is progesterone in Chinese medicine. Being very basic here in general, but um, for the sake of time. I don't like fish, any supplement that I can take. There are um, non-fish omegas out there. So there's some from algae that you could do. Um, and then there are nuts and seeds that can give you omegas, but not everybody can get omegas from nuts and seeds. In fact, a large portion of the population cannot. So um, you could just try to find like the least fishy fish oil, if you will, or an algae-based one. Um, but a lot of the fish oils don't even have a taste. Um, evening primrose, I think it's helping my cycle a lot, but I read some concerning things too. So what I see, um, or have seen in the past is that it can help for like a cycle or two. And then after that, it seems to start to cause estrogen dominant symptoms. Not in everyone, but in a lot of people because it is a phytoestrogen. So I much prefer fish oil over evening primrose oil. And if you need the GLAs, like you could get it through some food too. Um, borage might be another choice. Um, but typically the, the fish oil will give you the same benefit and the higher doses. But not everybody reacts that way. You might be that person that can be on evening primrose oil and you're fine, right? Um, if my vitamin D is high, could this be damaging egg quality ahead of an egg retrieval? Um... That's a really good question. Not that I know of, but high levels of vitamin D, more that if you're taking high levels and you don't necessarily need it, can be toxic to the body. So potentially, but how high are we talking? Like if your levels are like at an 80 or a 90, then I just would not take any vitamin D except for what's in the prenatal or just drop a prenatal altogether. Just make sure you're getting methylfolate and then like greens, you know, like a spirulina instead of a prenatal. Um, but yeah, high levels of D, meaning taking it when your D is already high can be toxic. But I don't know that vitamin D that is high is toxic necessarily. Best supplements for Hashimoto's. So it is an autoimmune condition. So I think of things like N-acetylcysteine, um, I think of high dose fish oils, like two to three grams of fish oil for an anti-inflammatory. I will do the Wobenzyme again, the proteolytic. Um, 
enzymes. I would do, you know, I like the reserva cell, something for the immune system there, an NAC or glutathione. Um, then you need like your zinc and your selenium, things like that to really support thyroid health. Thorn makes, um, well, that has iodine, so don't do that one. A non-iodine um, thyroid support, which I think Designs for Health has one. Um, but you can Google it, thy thyroid support without iodine. Um, with Hashi's too, you really want to think about gut health. So a good probiotic, making sure you're on a really good solid diet that's free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Really important for Hashi's. Um, okay. Why do you recommend fermented cod liver oil over prenatal? Great question. Um, I do talk about it. I definitely have posts about it, but generally speaking, um, vitamin, sorry, cod liver oil comes naturally occurring with vitamin A and vitamin D. Both are imperative to optimal hormones. And so cod liver oil just packs more punch. That's how I look at it. I do recommend good quality fish oils and also, um, kind of back in the day, like when I wrote Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, I didn't even have a prenatal in that book because they were so crappy. They didn't have what we needed. Um, most of them had folic acid. None of them had choline. Now we have really good prenatals out there. So had I written this book now, I would have prenatals mentioned in there. Same thing goes for fish oil. A lot of the fish oil on the market back then was just shit. You know, it was crappy. And so fermented cod liver oil, like I trusted the, the producers of it. I trusted the, the content of it and how it was made. It was very traditional. Now that's shifted a little bit. So I have, I, most of my clients are on a mix and myself too. I take cod liver oil one day. I take a good uh, fish oil. I'll take the Thorn Super EFA the other days uh, and I alternate. That's how I do it. And a lot of my patients do that. But it was mainly for the vitamin A and the vitamin D content. And fermentation too also helps with absorption. But Autoimmune patients and some people that have histamine reactions don't do well on fermented anything. So then I recommend the Rosita cod liver oil, which is not fermented. Long story short. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. I'm using a needle to know more about my hormones and it shows I have high progesterone in the follicular phase. Is there a supplement to regulate that or do you think a supplement could be causing that? Um, great question. Uh, I think a supplement could be causing that. So make sure that you're not taking something like Vitex as that could be causing that. Um, and make sure nothing you're taking has progesterone in it in the, in the follicular phase. Secondly, I have gone down a rabbit hole with a handful of clients over this that sometimes those tests are inaccurate. So I'm going to start with that. So if you are seeing consistently high progesterone, so like above an eight to a 10 in the follicular phase, I really urge you to get blood work done to double check it. So at the same time, in your follicular phase, get your progesterone tested. If it is high in your follicular phase, you may have something called CAH, which is uh, chronic adrenal hyperplasia. And that is basically like an inflammatory response, causes progesterone to be high. It changes the uterine lining and you will not get pregnant because your lining will not be implantable once you ovulate. What seems to help, and I'm medically diagnosing, but you obviously have to go to a doctor and look into all this. We have to regulate the adrenal hyperplasia. Um, low dose naltrexone seems to really help that situation. So there's some info for you there to kind of dig into it. Um, Cha, cha, cha. Um, is PQQ as good for egg quality as CoQ10? Yeah, I kind of use one or the other. I don't necessarily go into both. I really love the Neo Q10 though by Theralogix. I think it's just like probably one of the best products out there. Packs a big punch. You really only need one a day instead of like 600 of the average CoQ10. Um, Life Extension also makes a mitochondrial optimizer with PQQ, which is really good. So sure, one or the other. I don't think you need both. Um, remember too, like diet, we can't out supplement a shitty diet. Um, and so diet should be our primary place where we're getting our antioxidants in the forms of lots of really good quality vegetables. Um, what would you recommend to stabilize the menstrual cycle and lengthen 
and to lengthen one phase one. Oh, follicular phase. Um, so fat, fat and, um, so good quality fats, again, like fish oils, good quality fish oil or cod liver oil, liver, liver in pill form, organ meats, things like that. Blackstrap molasses. I was just talking about that in my private community about blackstrap molasses. And I love that for the follicular phase and for building estrogen. The other thing too, and this has nothing to do with supplements is you really have to think about like estrogen is about like nourishment and building and the follicular phase is about growth and maturation so slowing down making sure you're getting your rest making sure you're getting to bed before 11 p.m making sure you're getting your seven to eight hours making sure you're not over exercising not over sweating not under eating things like that really impact that follicular phase okay um Oh, yeah, and running more than 12 miles a week is a no-no for the follicular phase. If you're having follicular phase issues, I just saw that your uh, your handle had the word run in it. Um, do you recommend Wobenzyme when trying to conceive? Yes, I do. Depends on the case, but in a lot of cases, I do. Yes. And there is research showing that women with recurrent pregnancy loss who are taking Wobenzyme had less loss. Um, it was a small study, but it's still something interesting. And I think it's because it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. Do you need to take NAC on an empty stomach or could it take um, at the same time as your alpha lipoic acid? I think that's a good question and I don't know that I know the exact answer. Um, I think uh, 30 minutes before or two hours after eating to avoid competing with protein for absorption. So that's the answer. So with other amino acids, though, it can be taken at the same time as other amino acids, but don't compete with your food if it's a protein-rich meal, which all your meals should be protein-rich in my humble opinion. Um, okay, let me just see. There's so many questions. You guys are amazing. Um, is it okay to alternate between thorn prenatal and mega food baby and me when one is it? Oh, of course. Yeah. Those are both great prenatals. So yeah. Um, the big thing with any of the prenatals, which is like an aside, including the thorn. I love the thorn because it's three pills, easy peasy, not enough choline. So you got to make sure your diet is rich in choline, like two egg yolks a day. You're getting your liver in. Um, you're getting greens in like spinach that's rich in choline and or you're taking something like choline or sunflower lecithin. And that's what I do. I try to get my girls at like 500, 600 additional milligrams of choline a day. Um, and really there's only one or two prenatals out there that hit that and you have to take a lot of those pills. So I still do it with the thorn and then add in the choline. Um, I'm already taking levothyroxine to lower TSH. Is there a supplement to help? So something that supports thyroid function, something with zinc and selenium. So there are a lot of good thyroid support medicines out there, but basically zinc and selenium are the, the nutrients that you need to help support thyroid function. Um, and then I got five more minutes, guys. Do you look for something specific in probiotics? So... Generally speaking, and this is, I'm going to read you an email that I just got from um, someone, a medical doctor that is a leader in his field of anti-aging, and I'm not going to name his name. Um, we run an email chain, and this is what he said about probiotics. Um, probiotics are a crapshoot anyways. Everyone's microbiome is so different, and so... And he said, and most probiotics are overpriced for what they are, that like... I think there's a few places where everyone gets all their probiotics when they make supplements. So there's a lot that you kind of can't go wrong with, but then also you really still have to focus on your diet and healing the gut and restoring a healthy microbiome. Um, I do tend to like the probiotics that have that are soil-based and that have pre and probiotics, but that doesn't work for everybody. If you have SIBO or you have histamine issues, then you have to be on a different style probiotic. And then we're looking for something that's giving you, you know, um, millions of uh, probiotics in there too. So I do have my recommended probiotics on my site, uh, amyraup.com slash fertility supplements. And I'm going to answer, well, I'll go for three more minutes and then I'm going to go. Um, okay. Um, 
FET next week, anything I should do to prepare, going for acupuncture. So acupuncture, meditation, rest, keep your body warm, um, take all your supplements. And I did talk about supplements for IVF um, earlier on in this conversation. So once the recording's up, you can go back. Any supplements for low AMH? You know, I think about quality over quantity, really. Um, and also remember AMH is a hormone secreted by the ovaries. So improving circulation and blood flow in the reproductive organ area in the lower abdomen will help with your AMH. So you wanna think about things that are gonna improve circulation. Um, so things like, you know, omegas for sure, fish oil. Um, and then I, I do love like as an aside, castor oil packs, um, acupuncture, abdominal gua sha. Those are all really good. I would think about like ovacetol, um, to really help juice up those ovaries. Um, maybe DHEA, if your DHEAS is low, that could help as well. But then I really focus on quality and knowing that like, Listen, even if your AMH is super low, there's still eggs left in your ovaries and we can still impact the quality of them even if we can't necessarily impact the quantity left. So egg quality diets start there. Um, nutrient dense foods too. I'm also, this is another side, I'm a huge fan of organ meats. So Ancestral has a product called Female Enhancement and it's got like ovaries and fallopian tubes and things like that in there. Um, personally, I take four of those every single day. And I think that can also help with something like low AMH. Um, so this isn't really a supplement question. Um, I have seen clinically and recommend regularly one cup of caffeinated something every day is perfectly fine. So stay around 80 to 100 milligrams. It has to be organic, cannot have it on an empty stomach. So caffeine is fine in my opinion, but under those direct circumstances. Um, inositol used for endo. Sure. I tend to go more <coughs> NAC and antioxidants, but inositol seems to be across the board helping everyone with um, quality. So it can't hurt, but I tend to go more like antioxidant rich, which inositol is an antioxidant, but look more NAC glutathione, and then like breaking down the endo. So I'm thinking about the serapeptase enzymes, the proteolytic enzymes. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to take one last question and then I'm going to go. I can't believe the amount of questions. You guys are amazing. Um, uh, best fertility friendly supplement while trying to conceive. Um, magnesium is, of course, my favorite. Melatonin. If you are having sleep issues, I think melatonin, but I would not go above one to one and a half milligrams because too much can delay ovulation. Um, yeah. And then if not, there is, but some of the amino acids, I'm sorry, some of the, yeah, like the GABA and the L-theanine can really help too, but you cannot take those once you're pregnant. Melatonin, I would stop once you're pregnant too. Um, there you have it. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. This was amazing. There are so many additional questions and I feel bad I'm not answering them, but I have to go record a story of hope for one of my girls who's now on the other side. And I can't wait to share that with you guys. I've had three stories of hope just this week that I've recorded. So yeah, if you want to see my supplement list, amyrop.com slash fertility supplements. And, um, I update that regularly, like I said. And so I'm sending you guys all love. Thank you so much. And I'll see you very soon.